Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today I want to talk to you about what vehicle to buy. You know, I'm making this in October of 2021 and finding a decent used vehicle has become incredibly difficult because of the chip shortage and the whole supply chain shortage. Now, they aren't making nearly as many new vehicles as they normally would. And so because there aren't many new vehicles, people are being forced to buy used vehicles. So there is a huge competition right now for used vehicles. And if you are just about to go on the road uh, and you're looking for a vehicle, my goodness, you know what I'm talking about. That you know, it's and it, it's worked. It's all the way down. So, uh, really good, high quality cars that are expensive are uber expensive. Now you are you can expect to pay more than you would have for the new car that's a couple years old. And it, so people are are buying lower down, older and older to find a car they can afford within their budgets. So if you go out to buy a full-sized, good used van, you're gonna find that they are very scarce. They are hard to find, they are few and far between. When you do find one, it sells just like that, and it will be a lot of money. Uh, and so one you can afford, say you're like most of us, you're in the five to maybe not even most of us, a lot of us, some of us are in the five to $10,000 range, uh, they're getting scarce. So my advice for a long time now has been do not buy, do not even try to buy a full-sized van. I mean, if you come across a great deal, it's just, you know, you have a neighbor and he's getting rid of it and you know it's reliable, grab it up. I mean, grab it up as fast as you can. But, you know, if you look for a little bit and you can't get one, I think you just are going to have to accept that full-sized vans are now just really hard to reach. Not only do we have the uh, chip shortage and the supply line shortage, but you also have all these people being forced into living on the road in a van. I mean, literally, they're being forced into it. And so they go out and buy them all up, and there just aren't any. It's supply and demand, and they're not out there, and so the prices are really, really high. My advice has been to buy a minivan, like you see behind me here, a nice, really nice Astro minivan. Uh, you know, we founded Homes on Wheels Alliance, the 501c3, and one of the things we do is uh, buy good used minivans and donate them to people in need who could never afford it. They have an income, they can live out here, but they don't have a vehicle they can live in. And so we buy and donate to people minivans. This is, in fact, this is just that. We, someone donated this minivan to us. Thank you all so much. They went through it and did all the mechanical work on it, and this is a fantastic van. So we're, we're buying and donating minivans, and because of that, we're real intimately familiar with the prices of minivans. And the prices of minivans has skyrocketed as well. It's just that there are many, many more of them. You know, for every full-sized van that's sold that goes to a plumbing company and a very few passenger uh, uh, full-sized vans, there are probably 10 to 1. I don't know what the real ratio is, but it's very high. Lots of soccer moms out there in minivans. So if you go and try to buy a full-sized van and a minivan, you're going to find a lot more minivans. And to find a good used minivan is much, much easier. It's possible. I mean, it's not even really possible a lot of times with a full-sized van. It's at least possible with a minivan. I'll give you an example. We started a Homes on Wheels Alliance, Howa, started donating uh, minivans three years ago. We bought our first one, and I was there when we bought the first one. And uh, we bought a 2001 Ford Windstar. It had 95,000 miles on it. It was in really good shape, really clean. Uh, uh, it, it was old, owned by a little old lady, an older woman, and she didn't drive it much. Uh, she drove it more than just a church, but she didn't drive it much. It was in fantastic shape. So we bought it for $3,000. And at that time, I was saying, you should be able to find a good minivan for $3,000. And we have been continued. The next year, we have, so far, we've done about 10 minivans that we've bought and donated. And I think uh, every year, the price has gone up. So the second year, uh, when uh, things started to get really expensive, a year ago, we started figuring 5000 for a minivan. Now we're figuring for the exact same minivan, we're figuring eight to 10,000. They have gone up that much. So try and find a good used minivan. Here's the problem with minivans, as I'm sure you're all really well aware, they are 
small. <laughs> I mean, there's just not much room in a minivan. And there's not a whole lot of room in a full-size van, but there's a whole lot more in a full-size minivan than a minivan. Well, on this one, uh, we have uh, some real good friends over at Fibrine.com. And they make and install high tops on full-size vans and minivans. They put full size. They put uh, high tops on virtually the entire array of of uh, minivans. Uh, if you go to their website, Fiberine.com, you'll see that they will put high tops on um, Hondas, on Honda, Auto Toyota Siennas, Honda Odysseys, the Caravans, uh, the Dodge, the Dodge Chrysler. They'll put them on the Connect, the little tiny uh, uh, Ford Connect. Also the Nissan. I think it's NV200, the small, the smaller uh, in, uh, Nissan NV van. Uh, they'll put them on the smaller uh, Mercedes Benz uh, and on the smaller uh, Dodge Ram. They have a small, I think it's called a city. I'm not sure. Whatever it's called, they'll put a top on it, a high top on it. So that just changes everything. And I want you to to at least be aware and. And they're very expensive. I'm not going to kid you. Labor is expensive. It's cutting the top off. It's installing the new one. It's getting it done right. It's making the fiberglass and the mold and making the thing and putting it on. It's it's an expensive process. Uh, it's going to be a lot of money. I I can't give you an exact quote. Go to Fiberine.com. Give them a call. Ask them how much it will cost on your minivan. So my point here is the whole point of this video is... Uh, you probably need to be thinking in terms of a uh, a minivan as your new vehicle, the most size. There's a lot of advantages. You get much, much better gas mileage. If you can live with the small size of a uh, of the Ford Transit Connect, they'll get 28, 30 miles to the gallon. And, and, and that's an honest. That's not just some number they make up. A lot of people make up numbers about miles per gallon, but they will get an honest 28 to 30. I've known a lot of people that have tracked it and know for a fact. So you can get, but even any of them, the Honda, the Toyota, the Dodges, they should get mid-20s. You get great gas mileage, you're great stealth in the city, they're pleasant to drive, they're easy to drive in the city, uh, and I think they have a good, decent amount of room. It's enough. It's enough for you to be comfortable, not spacious by any means, there's no luxury in there, but they're comfortable. So consider a minivan. And to make it even the better, if you have the budget, they're expensive. I'm not. I'm not kidding you. I believe you're looking at three to four thousand dollars, even for the minivan tops. Call Fiberine and and see. But um, but so with a a top on it, boy, they become way more comfortable. A so, lot of them are 12 inches and and only. Um, with the Astro Safari, because it's built on a truck frame, uh, it's built on the S10 platform. Frame and it's a it's a heavier duty frame. One of, one of the reasons I, I like really like the Astro Safari, they're a great choice. It's got a good solid engine, um, the 3.4 I believe V6. Uh, it's a good solid engine, um, and you can get this great big high top. They even make a full camper, 24 inch top that goes out over and extends over the front. Uh, but you'll have to call, and that, I'm sure that'd be a lot of money. I don't know how much. You also have to be aware you've added a lot of weight up high and be very much take that into account um, and, and reduce your overall weight. But I'm just saying, give serious thought to a high top if it's in your budget. If you've budgeted for a full-sized van and you know you just can't find one or they're just have become too expensive, consider really strongly a minivan with a high top from Fiberine.com. Okay, let's take a look inside and you'll see this thing has become suddenly very large and open. This isn't one of the real long vehicles. You can buy much longer minivans than this, but my goodness, this is nice inside. Let's go inside. All right, folks, so now we're going inside the Astro. The, again, this is a uh, minivan that uh, Howa uh, Homes and Wheels Alliance, the 501c3, we started to support the nomadic community. Uh, they bought this. Oh, this was donated. I'm sorry. This was donated by a wonderful couple. And um, so just to give you a, a look inside, this is how we send it out. We just finished, uh, just signed it over to them. But you can see, my goodness, this thing is enormous inside. And so it's just really, really nice. Okay, so I'm holding the uh, my camera out at arm's length. So you can see 
that I, I, I'm uh, 5'8", probably a little shorter. I'm shrinking as I get older. And uh, what have I got? Six, eight inches above my head. If I slouched a little, my goodness, I'd have a full foot. So this is a 24-inch top. A, a 12-inch top, which is you can get on all of the minivans, is a 12-inch top, uh, would be enough for that an average person, 5'8 or less. If you're a woman, you're probably 5'8 or less. And even a tall, now a tall man at 6'4", we had a guy in here that was over six foot and he was comfortable standing upright. So that's very, very tall. And of course they, they cut the, uh, it off the whole front end and leave in a platform. See, you get storage all the way over the cab, which is really good. So you get storage on a ledge. See, here's the ledge. We, uh, we put these in so no one could ever bonk their head. We don't want people bonking their head. Uh, and we put uh, this in here so that, you know, that's soft. You're not going to bonk into that or cut yourself. And you get the fantastic windows that open. You can see this one has the screen. This side is tinted and open. Uh, all these are more. All this costs a little more. Uh, these are all the little things that Fiberine, now Fiberine donated this to us, so we did not pay for it, but we are very, very grateful to Fiberine for this donation. Nice, huh? Really nice. You can see that she's really done a nice job with uh, outfitting this, uh, this minivan. It's very, very comfortable. Very comfortable. Nice, you know, Astros have plenty of room. Astro is really a very good choice. This is one of the one of the great things I love about the Astro is these doors. Uh, you can see it has a regular barn door that uh, it's not a barn door. What is that? Uh, it's like a French door. This is like a French door. The top opens up, and then these two open out to the side, so you can open up the top and have the bottoms closed. So Gosan generously donated this um, this fridge, a solar panel, and their solar oven. So they were very, very generous. But the bottom line is, with this high top in here, it's a whole nother world. It's just fantastic. It's a great home. Any of us would be very, very comfortable. And you, you can turn any minivan into a very comfortable, pleasant home with a high top. So there you have it. I think the mini vans with a high top is one of your very best choices. And I know a lot of you aren't going to be able to afford the cost of the high top and a good used minivan. Vehicles have become so expensive, all, all of them, that uh, you're probably gonna spend all your money on your vehicle. But if you have the money to spend, I hope you will at least give thought to a minivan with a high top. You get all the mini advantages of, uh, of the minivan and you get the comfort and pleasure. I mean, they're just a pleasure inside of a high top. So go to Fiberine.com. Uh, they have a mini minivan page. Just click on the minivan page, go to it, see all that they have, and then uh, give them a call and find out what they can do for you. I do believe they have a long waiting list, but uh, it takes a while to find a minivan. So if you get started now, maybe you can get one sometime soon. They're located in Southern California in the area around Los Angeles, the bigger valley area somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. It'll be on their website. You can find out. Give them a call. Okay. So I just, it's, it's become so difficult to find a vehicle. I wanted to give you some other ideas. Uh, you're going to probably going to have to start working your way down. Um, my, my, after a full-sized van, definitely, definitely a minivan is my first choice for most people as reasonably affordable, many, many advantages. And after that, uh, a full-sized SUV. Uh, if you just cannot find a minivan and start looking for full-sized SUVs, and then you're gonna have to start looking for older and, uh, and more tired vehicles. The big thing here is you don't wanna break down in the middle of nowhere. That's the one thing none of us want. So get the newest, best, most reliable vehicle you can Never, 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 never. How often? Never. Just once, it's okay, just once. No, 
never buy a vehicle without getting it checked out by a mechanic first. It's just worth, it's going to be 100, 150 bucks. It's going to be worth every penny, the best money you'll ever spend. If a guy says, no, you can't take this vehicle to a mechanic, walk away. And you'll lose vehicles because you'll say that and he'll say, well, I got someone else coming here right now who's going to buy it sight unseen. You'll, you may lose vehicles because of that, but never win. How often should you go buy a vehicle without having it taken to a mechanic? Never. Get it taken to a mechanic. I guess you could come to the point where you just cannot buy a vehicle afterwards. Then maybe you will have to give up. But man, no, no, no. Get it checked out by a good mechanic first. I hope you will always, always do that. Okay, I hope you got something out of this video. You learned from it. And, uh, and um, you, this makes your entry into the nomadic life all that much better. If you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.